Introduction Welcome to the United Nations Police English Language Assessment. This assessment consists of two parts, the reading comprehension and the audio comprehension. The instructions to both parts will be clearly explained before we commence. The use of any computer devices, microphones, books, external notes, or assistance from others is not permitted. We expect full compliance and good conduct during this test. Any candidates who fail to observe appropriate conduct will be excluded from the assessment process and the incident will be communicated in writing to the authorities of the member state concerned and to the SAAT coordinator in the UN Police Division. Part 1 is the reading comprehension. You will be given a mission-related story with a question and answer sheet which contains 10 questions related to the key facts of the story. You will also be given a blank sheet of paper for your note taking. Any notes that you take on the blank sheet you are allowed to keep throughout the exam. Read the text very carefully. You may write on the test as you wish. You will not be graded for any marking made on the test itself, only on the question and answer sheet. After reading the test, answer the 10 questions on the question and answer sheet. Be sure to include the entire key fact in your answer. It is not necessary to write in grammatically complete sentences. It is highly recommended that you use the blank sheet of paper for important notes from the reading. These notes will be essential for part two of the assessment. You will be able to keep only the sheet of paper with your notes for the second part of the exam. Keep the test and question and answer sheet face down until you are asked to start. You will have 20 minutes to complete the reading comprehension. The instructor will indicate when these 20 minutes begin. The instructor will then announce when there are five remaining minutes and when there is one final minute. After the 20 minutes have passed, the instructor will collect the reading test and the question and answer sheet. You will keep the written notes that you made on the blank sheet of paper for the second part of the assessment. Please write your full name, your individual test serial number, and other details clearly in the space provided on the question and answer sheet you receive. Good luck. Introduction this is the second section of the UNPOL Combined Language Assessment. It is divided into two parts. In the first part, you will hear one person describing the mission-related topic you have just read about in the reading comprehension. It will be introduced as the narrative. In the second part, you will hear a conversation between two people who are discussing the same mission-related topic. It will be introduced as the dialogue. Please be reminded that the use of any computer devices, microphones, books, external notes, or assistance from others is not permitted. Candidates who fail to observe appropriate conduct during this test will be excluded from the assessment process. Such actions will be duly noted and communicated in writing to the authorities of the member state concerned and to the SAAT coordinator in the UN Police Division. You will be given a report writing form and another blank sheet of paper. Take careful notes on the blank sheet of paper of both the narrative and the dialogue. Pay attention to the important facts and key information. You will hear the recording only one time. Once the narrative and dialogue are finished, you will be asked 
to use your notes from both the reading and the audio parts to write down your own complete police report. You will have 30 minutes to complete your police report. The instructor will indicate when these 30 minutes begin. The instructor will then announce when there are five minutes remaining and when there is one final minute. Please do not forget to write your full name, your individual test serial number, and other details clearly in the spaces provided on the report writing sheet. Good luck. Narrative. References made to the death of Elver Bimoli, reported on the 24th of September, 2011. On 28 September, Katrina Roku's mother reported to the police station. She stated that her daughter was involved in the crime, but was scared and refused to talk about the incident. Katrina's mother asked police for help. The investigation team accompanied Katrina's mother to her flat. Katrina looked scared, but finally agreed to reveal the details of the incident that she was involved with on the 21st of September. Katrina stated that Elver was planning to buy a car the next day and wanted his friends Marco and Peter to come with him. At midnight, all four of them left the club and went to Elver's flat, where they drank whiskey and listened to some music. Elver showed them a picture of the BMW vehicle he had, which he planned to buy for 9,000 euro. He took this photo out of a wooden box that also had money and jewelry in it. He gave Katrina a golden ring. They shared more drinks, and Elver became very drunk. He had trouble standing, slipped and fell to the floor, hitting his head on a corner of a metal table. Elver got cut and started bleeding, but he told everyone he was fine. He refused any assistance and asked to leave him alone. Peter grabbed the money and jewelry from the box and they went away. Katrina stated she wanted to call for help, but the brothers forced her to go with them. They argued in the parking lot and Peter threatened to kill her if she did not get into the car. They got into a white Mercedes belonging to Marco. Peter gave Katrina the necklace and bracelet, but kept the cash with him. She was scared because Peter threatened to kill her if she talked to anybody about this incident. Katrina called Elver's house several times the next day and only got a busy signal. Katrina said she was expecting the two brothers to come to Allo Club at about 2200 hours tonight. The police operation was organized in the Allo Club. Marco and Peter came to the club at about 2230 hours and were arrested. The prosecutor was informed about the incident and initiated the formal investigation. Katrina was interviewed again the next day. Dialogue. Police officer, I am conducting an interview in reference to the death of Elver Bimoli at the Copper Street apartment building on 22nd September. Please state your name and address for the record. Suspect, Katrina Roku, 27 Park Road. Were you with Elver on the night of 21st September? Yes, Elver was at the Allo Club. 
he came in about nine o'clock in the evening and had some drinks. He was waiting for two friends to come. Who were these friends? They were brothers, Marco and Peter Chess. Did they come to the club? Yes, they came in at about 10.30 and had some drinks with Elver. I finished my shift after 30 minutes and then joined them. So what happened after 2300 hours? Elver asked the brothers to go with him to buy a car the next morning and they agreed. Then he asked us all to come to his place to celebrate him getting a car. So we left around midnight and went to his flat. Where is his flat? It is in the Copper Street Apartments. But I don't remember the number. Tell me what happened at his flat. We listened to music and drank whiskey. First, we drank a partially full bottle, and then we finished a second bottle. Elver got drunk. He told us about his car and brought out a small wooden box. It had a picture of the car, a BMW. Then he opened a hidden drawer of the box and showed us his cash and jewelry. He said he had 9,000 euros to buy the car. How did Elver get the injury to his head? He wanted to dance with me. He was so happy that he gave me a golden ring from the box. But when he stood up, he was very unsteady on his feet. He fell and hit his head on the side of the metal table. Did someone push him down? No, not at all. He fell and hit his head, and then he sat on the floor bleeding. He did not want us to help him and told us to leave. When we tried to lift him by his arms, he refused our assistance. We got ready to leave when Peter grabbed the money and jewelry from the box and we ran out to their car. I wanted to call the ambulance, but the brothers refused to do it, saying that we would be blamed for hurting Elver. I started to cry, and we argued about it, but Peter said if I didn't get into the car, he would kill me. What happened with the cash and jewelry? Peter kept the cash and gave me the bracelet and necklace. He said that if I spoke to the police, they would blame me and say I killed Elver to get the jewelry. I was scared, so I did not tell you the true story at the beginning. If you have told us the truth now, there is no reason to be scared. Peter and Marco were already arrested by us in the Alu nightclub, thanks to your information. We have already informed the prosecutor about the incident. We may need to interview you again later.